I suppose this is part four now. And like I said, super excited about this episode. By the way, this echo deal that we got going on here right now, it's getting kind of annoying. I can't really do anything about that, so. Could possibly open the doors and windows to kind of alleviate the effect. But apparently it's still winter time outside, so. That's a fact. Winter forever. But anyway, like I explained in my last episode, I want to build the work tables out of concrete. And not just the plate. I want the legs to be concrete as well. I'm thinking I'm gonna go about... Well, exactly this deep. Now the lathe that I'm currently kind of trying to get is about 2.1 meters long. So from there to somewhere here. And I have to keep that in mind when doing this this side work table to make sure that it does not interfere with the lathe. I would rather have the lathe here before doing the table. I even have a seller. Actually, I found the guy like a month ago. The problem is that the thing weighs about 1.5 tons and it's on the other side of Estonia. So about 200 miles, I guess. Yeah, Estonia is not that big. It's from one end to another about maybe 300. But still, to get it from there to here, the transport will be like 500 to 700 bucks if I rent out the company. Now, I could go and get it myself if I had the right trailer, which I could rent. Also, would need a bigger car or truck. Now that would be the cheapest option because renting the trailer for one day is only like 20 bucks or so. And I'm pretty sure I could get the car from somewhere. But um, I need these special trailer license things. So instead of paying 500 bucks for the company people, I decided to go into driving school and do the trailer license. It kind of blows my mind that doing the license is like two times cheaper than uh, asking some company to haul the thing over here. Yeah, that's kind of weird. So currently we have to make do without a lathe. I can only hope that the guy who's selling the lathe is patient enough to wait two months. Now, mostly the tables will look alike, but there will be some mild differences. So on this side, I'm planning to add a steel blade on top of the concrete. Because like I said in my first episode, I want this side to be the metal working side. Bunch of welding, grinding and uh, whatnot. On this side though, I do have some ideas, I'm not gonna spoil anything. Maybe it will look cool. So without any further ado, let's get to work. Got to build the four works for the concrete table. Ooh, that feels a lot better. Why is this thing so low? What? That makes no sense. By the way, these gloves a gift from my Santa Claus. The guy bought them. I think he used them for like five minutes. To lift one thing and he was like you man i don't need these anymore do you want them or shall i just throw them away i mean who does that personal santa claus everyone should have one I have a 
feeling it's gonna be a nightmare to get these formwork visas out of these tight areas. I'm trying to use as much as random pieces I have scattered all around the place before getting any new materials. What? How is that possible? Just pick a random piece and it fits just like that. Everyone are thinking about it. I'm just gonna say it. Witchcraft. smells about it. This is gonna be quite a beefy table. Yeah. Tiny bit more. Well, I think I'm getting there. Feels like I'm building a building. Think that will do it. I guess we'll see once the boring starts. If if the form works, just start to bend, I guess. Whenever you're dealing with concrete, you kind of have to keep one thing in mind. Concrete is quite dense stuff. And when you put it in formwork, it will apply a lot of pressure to set formwork. Trust me, bro. Been there and back. I've had some formwork failures. Not really catastrophic failures. You know, when the formwork just leaves, the build site, but I've had some bending in some situations. Maybe this will hold. So, concrete time. How about no? Me thinks before doing any mixy mix, let's finish off the secondary work table as well. Now, this will be a bit different than that side. So this side has four, one, two, four legs. 
There I'm currently planning to put only two legs and then make the table arc at the center. Like uh, building a bridge, an arcing concrete bridge. Never done it before, but maybe, maybe I can manage and maybe it will look cool. The table thing, however, will not be that long. It will only be from the corner to somewhere here. So about... Well, it's uh, less than six miles. Still need about... This, this much room for the, for the lathe. And I figured I'm gonna leave this spot open to, to place the welding trolley thing. I've been actually cooking it over in my head for a while now. Either make it like three meters long and skip the welding express parking spot. But uh, I have no place to put that thing, so so I'm gonna make the table a bit shorter, have some room for the express, and also some room for the lathe. Current plan is to put the wood fire stove in this corner, and then have a chimney that goes through the roof. At least that's my current plan. Those do then to change a lot, although. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Kinda weird, but um, anyway, let's try to do... I can't name any arcing bridges right now. So let's do that thing. I wish I had two of these. I need like 2.5 meters, but the thing is 4 meters long. This sucks. It would be awesome if I could see anything. That would be incredible. Bro. But it kind of looks like an arc. I wonder if there's a better way to do this.
new line. Yeah, sharp move. We're good now. Bunch of levelness going on here. Think it's okay to add a bunch of more stuff now. <laughs> What is up with this crap now? So make up your mind, do you work or are you broken? I have no idea what's going on. That's probably because I use all the manuals to start fires with. Yeah, don't do that, that's dumb. Concrete table is brewing more difficult to build. I mean the formworks itself than I first anticipated. Taking quite a bit of time now. Why do I always think that oh I can do that in 10 minutes, I can do that in 30 minutes, end up doing it in like five weeks. Okay, before I go reinforce mode, let's do the second leg as well. This one game a bit narrow, but uh, yeah, I really want like minimal 20, currently I have 18, so I'm not really that much off, but still. This side will be a bit more difficult though. Kind of messed up here. What's up? I'm not right here.
think we're finito now. By the way, clear example here. Another reason why I did not want to remove those wooden pieces in the concrete. They're just so convenient spots to add some temporary anchors. You don't need to drill any holes or anything. Just drive a bunch of screws in there and then later you can take them out. Absolutely no difference whatsoever. So I think this um, should be strong enough. I'm kind of thinking maybe this is a bit too wide. And the one here is pretty narrow, so this should not bend. This might just slightly. But I don't really know what to put here. Maybe it's fine. Also the arc did not quite come as much arcish as I wanted it to come, but I think it's fine. Check it out guys. Spring. For the second time this year has decided to come out. I had my hopes up about two weeks ago, but then the winter was like, what's up bro, I'm back. As of now, looks like we'll not be seeing this stuff for a while. I'm super glad, I mean, this weather is perfect. But anyway, let's focus on the rebar deal now. Definitely need some steel in here. That side probably is not that important, but I'm thinking I might need to weld up some box tubes here. Just FYI, I hate rebar work. The main thing I hate about rebar is that it always gets stuck somewhere when you try to move the thing around. For some reason, this thing always wants to go in my buckets. Not sure what's up with that. Man, I really wouldn't want to work as a rebar dude. Rebar dude. Not quite sure what to pull off here. Maybe I don't need to put any 
beefy metals in here and I could just manage with some rebar Okay, I think this uh, corrupted rat maze will do just fine. I'm no structural engineer, that's for sure, but I think this should work. As long as I don't park the bobcat on here, then it should be fine. I think I put this the wrong way. That end should be at the bottom. Why did I just now notice it? Wow, I suck. Suck a lot. What the moron? I think I'm ready now. Ready to set up my setup. So I need um, some stuff. So I need this thing, also that thing, at an elevated height. Also this stuff. Oh, where water? Oh yeah. Earth valve thing. That's just great. Now I need to be. Uh, I need more chairs. Not these. These are hopeless. Piece of crap IKEA chairs. I mean, these things are usually made out of some paper and chewing gum. They will most likely break in half if you fart while sitting on them. That's a known fact. I need some uh, Soviet stuff. Oh yeah. Man, I have a lot of sewing chairs. I should put them on eBay. Set the starting beat to six million dollars and just let it ride. So that stuff, a bit of control. 
controlled spark. Also need some spark from that thing. Relax, bro. You will you will get your chance. Check it out guys, currently it's about about 5 p.m. right now, about two months ago during that depressing phase, you know, the winter phase, at 5 p.m. I was probably at bed sucking my thumb and that's because it was just pitch black outside. You could see absolutely nothing, it was like Nighttime 2.0, especially when there were clouds, not even the moonlight or stars or anything. It was just, it was dark. It was very dark, very dark. It's crazy how things can just change in two months time. I prefer this. This is a lot better. But anyway, let's do this bit now. Now I'm, pl I'm planning to do this fast gonna super mode this super duper mode but uh, I'm not gonna do it the way you think I'm gonna do it there is a small gatch that you will find out maybe in a minute or then so let's do this bit now hopefully the formworks will not collapse that would kind of suck like a lot considering it took me like two days to build them. Whoops. Guys, I forgot one thing, but it's not too late. Tastes about the same as it looks, not half bad. up with that then I will explain later let's proceed have a bit of a failure, tiny bit. 
As I was filling this foundation, all that force from that kind of pushed this way. Not sure if you can tell, but it pushed about two centimeters. This foundation inwards. Bugger. Thing is fine though. Nobody will ever know. works guys make sure you reinforce the thing like 10 times over I'm not really sure what's going on on the other side uh, seems fine you know that meme where there is a guy and around the guy everything is on fire but the guy is like this is fine it's pretty much the same deal right now I have the same situation everything is collapsing but I'm like this is fine this is normal Okay, I'm pretty sure the edges are nice and flat. If they're not, then nothing in this universe makes any more sense. starting to look like a table. Pretty much you need to perform a copy based on that one there. Quite similar. So about 11 hours has passed now. I think it's already nicely solid, but nowhere near its final strength. Fun fact here, guys. Concrete actually never stops hardening. The process just gets slower and slower until it just becomes unnoticeable. But concrete itself actually never stops curing. But anyway, let's do the other side now. You know, I did have a bunch of formwork bending going on on that side. I think I should try to prevent it from happening to this side. Just in case, let's add some more stuff here. I'm pretty sure it's hmm, still not strong enough. But I'm gonna sick of adding stuff to it. So let's just proceed. This time I will not forget about that thing. The idea is to create a volume inside the table 
where I could mount some sockets. Guess we'll see how that will turn out. But anyway, set up, check. Let's do this thing. I feel like I could do this an entire day and it would still not get any better. But anyway, see you in a moment. I guess it's solid now. Now if you are wondering, why did I not fill this up to the top? Well there is a genuine reason for it. I wanna try something that might look cool. Currently I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try. So let's start from this end and let's add that steel blade. Now to place the steel blade, I'm gonna use this edge as a leading edge and also I'm gonna need to add something there to make sure the steel blade is kind of level. It's still level. Sounding like the violin. Should get into this ward making business.
or not. Flat-ish now. So in order to anchor this thing to the concrete table, I only see one option. There's probably more, but uh, the one I see is the, the cheapest and the easiest. So because I added that um, Hoover Dam here, I'm gonna fill up the underside of this with some cement. Before, before that though, I'm gonna flip this thing around we have a bunch of nuts on it. After this area has been completely filled with concrete, then place the plate back and the nuts will hopefully act as anchors. So let's weld some nuts. First project on the future table is to make the first table. Now some of you guys did say that the thing might not fit anymore. Let's uh, test that theory out. What? Literally zero clearance on this side. Maybe 10 millimeters here. Told you it would fit. If this still works. Okay, I've been trying to trying to figure out what to put here. I could either weld a nut to the blade or these things. Personally I think this one will be a better anchor. I, I believe these are like battery clamps or something like that. And apparently I have an entire box full of them. Pretty sure I have like a lifetime supply of these things. So let's use these things. Probably would have been enough if I just installed like five. But you know what? One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three. Twenty-two, twenty-three is better than five. I'm almost positive about that. Twenty-three might be better than five, but twenty-five is a way cooler number. Now, in order to successfully proceed, I need some stuff. Well, in my defense, I have like half a ton of stuff back here. That's a pretty good defense. Stop bitching, bro. Make your cousins proud. It's only a little bit of weight. By the way, check this thing out, guys. Freaking Japanese cars. What is up with this crap, guys? I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure my skull at some point went on a date with this piece of crap. Freaking Japanese cars. Keep in mind, this is not a little car. 
think it's considered like an urban SUV or something like that. How did my concrete hold up? Wow. No damage at all. This is some great stuff right here. Mida. 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 Okay, guys, let's. Uh... Anyway. Okay, that should do the trick. Now we need to get that piece there somehow there without messing anything up. Pretty sure I can't ask the little one to help me out. Most likely she will just, you know, break. Let's, let's ask the white hobo. Yo, bro, you wanna help me out here? I just realized something. I don't care what this guy thinks. How lucky I got. Yeah, that's how lucky I got. You know, 
this arena sucks beyond sucking right now. If there was a word that is worse than beyond sucking, I would probably use it. I think it's gonna be one heck of a solid table. Oh crap! A oh, moron! Anyway, guys, we shall continue this episode forever. Let's to continue. I'm gonna reveal my plan for this side. I'm pretty sure I have not said a word so far in this video. So to finish this side, obviously the easiest solution would be to put a bunch of concrete here, wait for it to do its thing, and then try to do something with this thing. No, that would be the easiest. Also, don't forget the cheapest option. But I wanna try something interesting. So basically, I wanna do that but not with concrete, but mortar. So my goal is to take a bunch of these uh, earth rocks and try to place them here and then fill the gaps with mortar. But I'm pretty sure I will not be able to find so good rocks in uh, the right size that would perfectly fit here, like this one. So I'm thinking maybe I should cut some pancakes, some, uh, some rock pancakes. They're not edible, by the way. So don't try that. Now, in order to make sure that the pancakes that I got equal thickness and smooth, I do have a tool for that. And that tool also fits through the door like it was designed to. So I'm not really sure what I got this thing. Last time I used it. So let's just pick a new name for it. The tool that cuts stuff. 3000. 3004. So it's like a homemade type of deal. My cousin built it, did one project with it and hasn't used it ever since. I'm pretty sure I have used it more than he has. Very simple design. This thing is stationary. Just place your sandwich here and then just push the sandwich through. Basically, I just need uh, a bunch of those things. You can already start off from this bile. And I also have to make sure that the rocks are not too big. So maximum would be like, or something like this, because it can't hit this part. Actually, I don't think I need that many rocks. Then I'm not even gonna bother this whole ball. Go with this hobo instead. What a beat. I swear guys, one of these days, I'm gonna take my freaking bulldozer, drive over that thing so many times that it will automatically just enter Helheim, where it will be tortured forever. That's gonna be my life goal.
So I decided to go with five centimeters. So it's probably better to have some spare room than not have enough. This should do the trick. What? Check it out, guys. Impossible to push the socket in here. Yeah. Let's go with grab. Hmm. Whoops. That would have been kind of awkward. Oh, that's fixed. Why do I have to break stuff in order for them to work? It's just crap quality, guys. They make absolute junk these days. Well, one thing's for sure, I need to wear some earring protection or I'm gonna go deaf. So the idea is to cut a lot of them and uh, just pretty much fill the entire table. Might look cool, maybe, guess we'll find out soon. I still get a bit of uh, space dust, even with the water on. I don't really want to put any more pressure because the water will just kind of fly everywhere, including my face. The main goal for the water though is to extend the lifespan of the blade. Keeping this thing cool is probably the most important bit. Anyway, there seems to be a glitch here. That's a lot better. Let's uh, do something useful, I mean, maybe.
I do believe this is gonna look awesome. It's probably gonna take some time. So, yeah.
Huh. Smells like something's burning. But anyway, bro. Bunch of dopeness. Gonna be sweet. Maybe. So I was kind of hoping to get it uh, super flat, but um, it's not quite super flat, but it's flat enough. Yeah, I can only feel small bumps here and there. Very tiny. Overall, it's really flat. So in order to get this thing like super flat, probably you would need some type of uh, flattening setup. For example, when you're flattening a plank with a flattening bit. You're gonna go back and forward, back and forward, and that way you get a nice flat surface. But these things can't quite do that. Some Darian differences may occur. So the first run was performed with a standard diamond grinding disc. This thing will remove very much material at a very fast rate. Then I use this um, Whatever you want to call this thing. I guess it's some type of uh, cleaning disc. It's meant for Inox. I guess that's steel, cemento, no idea. Legno. But it definitely can't be Legos because those things are indestructible. Wood and concrete. This thing was like 10 bucks. And it disappeared in like one minute. Don't buy this piece of crap. Completely worthless but it did smooth out the mortar pretty well so maybe not that worthless and finally i use this uh, type of polishing disc basically it's like a well you polish stuff with it same deal meant for steel whatever that is whatever that is wood and concrete i would say this did a pretty good job i was actually looking for some type of Concrete polishing discs for a while. No local hardware stores really had any. I did find some uh, company which sold some uh, polishing discs that went from grid 50 all the way up to grid 4000. But for some reason, one of those discs cost like 51 bucks just for one disc. 50 bucks, guys. For one disc and the disc had zero diamond material on it although its manufacturer was Husqvarna so maybe there are some clues there I decided to go with uh, this setup instead so this was like 13 bucks I only needed one 10 bucks I needed one and a half and about 13 bucks and also needed about one and a half. Think it was worth it. I mean, the thing looks pretty cool as it is, but it's not finished yet. Yeah, I still need to apply some sort of coating on it. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Epoxy. Epoxy resin. Yeah, that was my first thought. You have to believe me when I say it. That was my first thought. When I was laying the rocks, I was thinking like, Okay, bro, this is gonna be really cool if if I added about this much of epoxy on it because the epoxy is uh, self-leveling. I was uh, excited, you know. Gonna have a epoxy rock table in the workshop. Seemed like a really cool idea. But uh, then the calculator. Calculator, guys. Calculator ruins all my plans. So I calculated that I need about 30 liters of the stuff to do a 10 millimeter bore for this entire surface. Now, if I got the cheap stuff, there are cheaper versions of epoxy available as well. So if I got the cheap stuff, I would have paid about 500 bucks. The more expensive stuff would have been around 800 bucks. Kinda a lot. Pretty much cancelled that plan right there. I mean, it doesn't seem like much, but uh, considering I'm quite over budget on this entire workshop so far, then uh, yeah, it's a bit much. You know what? In the last episode, I'm gonna do a rundown. Episode by episode, how much each episode 
cost me to make. I'm gonna do those list things. Guess we'll find out in the end. Luckily though, there were two other reasons why Can you get lost, please? Not that way. Go up. What the crap? You okay, bro? Come on. I'm trying to help you. Stop panicking. That's a huge bug. It's like trying to stab the plastic. Get lost, man. Wow. That is so weird. If I see you again, I'm gonna drive over you with my dozer. But anyway, to do other reasons why epoxy doesn't really seem like a good idea here. So number one was the price. Number two, if I put a layer here, these two surfaces will no longer be flat. All in all, it's not really that big of an issue. I guess it's more like a personal thing. I think it will annoy me. The third reason why epoxy is not that great. In the end, this is gonna be a workshop table. And I will most likely be dragging I-beams on it. So highly likely that I will mess up the surface of the epoxy resin. At least scratch it somewhat. Right now, I think this surface generally should be stronger than epoxy. But I'm not gonna leave it like this. I do have a plan. So after searching for a while, I found this product. Rock protection oil. Made out of boiled lin oil and dung oil. So this should uh, do something. Actually, I was looking to get pure dung oil. I've heard dung oil is pretty good for concrete surfaces. But believe it or not, I can't find any. I went to three different shops, hardware stores. All they had was linseed oil. Nobody even knew what dung oil was. What is up with that? I don't get it. Feels like I'm living in the North Pole somewhere. Nobody knows anything and nobody has anything. Freaking Estonia, bro. I also have this thing. This is like a granite varnish. So maybe I will add it once the oil dries up. But that's a maybe because, because this thing expired four years ago. But uh, it's water-based, so maybe it's still good. Smells like linseed oil. Looks a bit darker though. Check it out. Check it out guys. Some of these rocks really have a cool texture. Yet some of them are just stupidly boring. Anyway.
Yeah. It's pretty interesting, but uh, a bit too yellowy for my taste. Yeah, definitely a bit too yellowy, but still quite interesting. Because we'll see how it turns out once the oil dries. I need to put at least two coats on it. And if I'm not happy with it, I can just re-grind the surface and try something else. In the meantime though, let's focus on this bit. So in order to complete this, I need to go buy a steel blade plus some other crap. Let's go. Gonna be a super busy day, guys. First, I have to somehow survive this gravel road. Sure, I can manage that. Second, need to go pick up the trailer. Currently, I don't have it. After that, gonna go to the steel yard and pick up the steel plate for my second table. Number three would be that need to go get that special oil for the first table. After that, what was number four? I need to get a bunch of OSP panels. remember what I bought them for but uh, I'm sure it will come to me after I figure out the OSP mystery then I need to go pick up some electrical stuff for the next workshop episode then the same deal with the ventilation shop Finally, I have to go to the DMV office because I will be having my exams today. Exams for heavy trailer loads. But basically, I want to get license so I could haul my Yanmar and Bobcat around on a trailer. Need special license for that. Success guys. I did one mistake though. But maximum allowance of mistakes were four. So I guess that's I mean who would I be if I did not make a mistake somewhere? Keep in mind though that this was just a theory exam. And I still need to do the practice. Practice run. Personally I think that would be like a lot easier than theory, considering I'm driving around daily with a trailer. So that shouldn't really be a problem. You know what guys? I would call this day a success. Wasted a bunch of money on stuff and passed my exams. And the best part about it is that we're back at the 8th road. I hate this road so much. Oh, some white hobo in my way.
Mm. Oh boy. It's a bit on the heavy side. Now this is gonna be quite a joy to cut. So the, here's the problem I have. This boulder wall was never in a well a 90 degree turn. It was never straight. It kind of goes that way. So basically I want to make it fit as well I want to say as nicely as I could but rather I'm gonna say as nicely as I have patience for to do the cuts. Got my first steel dust in the workshop. Yippee! That's not going anywhere. But in the meantime, pants mode. really like this um, pattern that the OSB leaves on the concrete. Uh, looks pretty cool.
You know what? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna be patient this time. I'm pretty sure if I try to yank it out of here as it is, most likely gonna damage the surrounding concrete. So I'm gonna wait because I still have a couple of weeks, maybe three, until I need access to these sections. The goal is for the wood block to kind of dry up so it would shrink a little and then it should come out easier. But uh, let's do that now. Let's go with um, fence mode, gain mode, super pants mode. That, 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 that. Mm. Whatever mode this is. Sometimes I just want to set things on fire. This close guys, just giving up. They're like bonded together, trying to piss me off. And they are succeeding. Nightmare. That's the first word that comes to mind. 
this was a nightmare. I think building them for works was a lot easier than uh, taking and Bart. Especially on this table. But alas, we are finished. Now I just gotta clean up all this crap. Then we can finally start wrapping up this video. Maybe. Yeah, I think I'm pretty much finished. So the goal of this episode was to get a couple of concrete, a couple of concrete tables. I think I achieved that. I think I achieved that. I think this came out pretty well. Not like super big. 2.5 meters long and about a meter wide. I think it's big enough and yet it's not big enough. Kinda in the middle there, just perfect. Now initially I planned to also sand the legs, but this, uh, I kinda like this design. OSP gave it a pretty cool pattern. Yeah, it looks pretty interesting. This looks also pretty dope. I was afraid it's gonna be too yellowy, but once the oil started to dry up, I mean, the yellowy colors just disappeared, which is pretty interesting. Even now, all the oil has not dried up yet. Well, between the rocks, the oil has nicely dried up, but the rocks themselves, they don't really want to suck up oil that well. I guess the rocks are a lot more dense than the mortar stuff. But overall, I'm pretty happy how this table came out as well. So at the start of this episode, my original plan was to use this uh, plate on that table and make this entire table out of rocks. But this uh, plate would have been a bit small for that one there. So I ordered, so I ordered a new plate for that and decided to put this one back here. So now I have two welding tables. And I do not regret it. Actually, I prefer it. Now, I do plan to improve these tables somewhat. That's why I bought a bunch of that OSP there. Planning to put some shelves here so I could get more space for storage. Space, guys, extremely important. To put stuff. That's uh, like gold. So that will be in the next episode. I will be start putting things back. I mean, more aggressively than I have so far. If you remember, it took me one day to empty the entire room. But it has taken me... a bunch of weeks just to do put, the light, put the lights back and build a couple of really cool tables. So in the next episode, I will be ramping up the putting stuff back to you. So, yeah, I think that's it for this one. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.